facts that they're ignoring, that inflation is going to be moving in the opposite direction. They claim that they want it down at 2%. All the evidence shows that it's headed higher, and their response is, we're going to cut rates. Powell, right? If he doesn't care about inflation, then what the hell does he care about, right? Well, he cares about the debt and the enormity of the debt. What gold is screaming is that what the Fed is contemplating is a mistake. That cutting interest rates, whenever these cuts begin, is the wrong policy. The latest inflation numbers come amid signs of persistent strength in the U.S. economy. Despite the Fed's aggressive push to quell inflation with 525 basis point rate increases in 2022 and 2023, economist and gold advocate Peter Schiff has issued a stark warning, suggesting that few investors are prepared for something significant. Schiff explained that Fed rate cuts will make the inflation problem worse. U.S. inflation increased moderately in February 2024, and the cost of services outside housing slowed considerably. The personal consumption expenditures, PCE price index, rose 0.3%. Core inflation increased 2.8% year-on-year in February, the smallest gain since March 2021, after rising 2.9% in January. Gold prices rose to a record high Monday, as a softer U.S. inflation report cemented bets that the Federal Reserve would deliver its first interest rate cut in June. Over the past few days, Peter Schiff has issued numerous warnings regarding the U.S. market and economy through posts on social media platform X. On Monday, Schiff explained on X why gold is rising. Gold isn't rising just because the Fed is poised to cut interest rates. It's rising because cutting interest rates is a mistake. If inflation were falling with rates, real rates would be unchanged. But since inflation is rising, real rates are falling. That's why gold is rising, he detailed. Federal Reserve Chair Jay Powell has said he still expects inflation to fall towards the U.S. Central Bank's 2% goal. New data highlighted the bumpy road ahead for officials as they debate when to begin cutting rates. Schiff shared his observations on the statistics regarding inflation, aiming to assess how often inflation reached the 2% mark. Let's delve into the video to gain further insights. Before we begin, consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon to stay updated with the latest content. The Fed says they're data dependent. Well, why are they ignoring all of this data that says everything they're saying about inflation is BS? I mean, Powell keeps saying, yes, we're confident. We think inflation is going to go back down to 2%. Why? Why should it do that? What gives him this confidence? Just because he's raised interest rates up to five and a quarter percent? That's not a high rate of interest, especially when you have a big inflation problem like like the one we got now. You know, I look back at some of the statistics on inflation to just see, you know, how often we had inflation of 2%. And there was a 30-year period between 1966 and 1996. 30-year period, which obviously includes the 1970s, but 30-year period only one year, one year of those 30 years did we have inflation of 2% or lower. So the other 29 years, inflation was above 2%. And in fact, the lowest inflation year of those 29 years, the lowest was 2.5%. So we were still far away. A half a percent is still far away from two. And that was the closest we got during those 29 years. Now, if the Fed only got 2% inflation one year from 1966 to 1996, what makes Powell so confident that the next 30 years are going to be 2% every year or maybe maybe miss it this, this next year and then it goes down there? Why should that happen? In fact, why is he so confident that the inflation problem has been solved? We just had this huge breakout in inflation. We had a year of 9.1%. We've pulled back a bit, but that's it? That means we can start cutting rates? No, I look back, too, at the evolution of inflation in the 1970s. So you can see it. You go back and look at these charts, the statistics on the Internet. But 
inflation was picking up in the 1960s. The national debt is fast becoming the thorn in the American economy that nobody wants to extract, and it will continue to cause damage, sending the U.S. into a financial crisis and 10 years of stagnation. Yields on U.S. government debt rose to their highest levels in two weeks on Monday as stubborn inflation and a jump in manufacturing activity tempered expectations for interest rate cuts in 2024. Schiff wrote on X, It's game over for the Fed. Bond yields and gold prices are both rising. Despite expectations of Fed interest rate cuts, long-term interest rates are rising anyway. That's because rate cuts will make the inflation problem worse. That's bullish for gold, but bearish for bonds. Schiff has repeatedly warned about the U.S. economy. In December last year, he said, The big surprise in 2024 will not only be that the economy crashes into recession, but that high inflation returns with a vengeance. Now, let's redirect our attention to a video. Fed chairman who is telling the market that he is going to cut rates to expect rate cuts in the face of all this evidence that suggests that the inflation fire is not out, that it's about to come back and he's going to pour gasoline on it. That's proof that he doesn't care. So what is really driving Powell, right? If he doesn't care about inflation, then what the hell does he care about, right? Well, he cares about the debt and the enormity of the debt and the burden that these higher interest rates, they're not high by any historic sense of the word. They're just high in comparison to how low they were for the past decade and a half. And during that decade and a half, because rates were so low, everybody borrowed so much money. But because everybody now has so much debt, they can't afford these normal or even slightly less than normal rates that we have. And so that's why the Fed is cutting rates, not because it's winning the war against inflation. In fact, by cutting rates, it's surrendering and admitting that it lost. It just hopes that nobody uh, notices, although gold is clearly noticing. But they're trying to bail out the banks. They're trying to uh, bail out the government corporations, everybody who has debt. Bonds got killed today and gold went up and made a new high. At the same time, in fact, the yield on a 30-year treasury is almost 4.5%. I think it could take out 4.5% this week. What is that telling you, too? This is another warning because the Fed is going to be cutting rates. Okay, so why are yields rising? Because the bond market knows it's a mistake, too. Because bond investors realize that these rate cuts are inflationary, that the Fed is easing too soon, and rates are rising. This is going to complicate what the Fed is hoping to achieve by its rate cuts. Because if the Fed lowers short-term rates, but long-term rates rise in the face of that, and the yield curve steepens, that is going to create a lot of problems. You know, the mortgage market is not set by the Fed funds rate. It's more tied to the 10-year to the 30-year U.S. Treasury. So if those yields are rising, even as the Fed is talking about cutting or does, in fact, cut short-term rates, that is a big problem. But also, I think if the economy goes into recession, because again, or if it goes to the point where we officially admit that we're in a recession, rising long-term interest rates are going to complicate that recession because the consumer is not going to get the benefit that he's used to. When the economy turns down, you know, you get the rate cuts. And, oh, you can refinance your mortgage. No one's going to be refinancing their mortgage in the next recession because the Fed is not going to be able to lower mortgage rates because of how high inflation is going to be. Gold is telling you right now that this is not going to be like 2020 or 2008 or any of these previous recessions where the Fed was able uh, to provide this relief in the form of lower rates that helped you know, reduce people's debt service burdens, provided a stimulus uh, to consumption. That's not going to happen. In fact, there's going to be a sedative, rising rates and rising prices, which are just getting started. The data release offered a mixed outlook for inflation in the world's largest economy. February's core measure, the Fed's preferred underlying inflation gauge, fell to 2.8% from 2.9% a month earlier. But the dip reflected an upward revision for January when prices rose more quickly than previously. 
Some economists have suggested that rates may not fall at all. What is your stance? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. If you found this content helpful, give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to stay updated. Thank you for being a part of this journey with us.